You know, smartwatches, they have a sensor on the back and flashing lights and stuff. What the sensor sees when those lights are flashing is incredible. The most common light you'll see on the back of a smartwatch is green, and that helps to measure your pulse. But you may also see a red light. In fact, if your watch has a red light on the back, it has another light that you can't see. It has an invisible light on top of that. And the red light and the invisible light together help to measure the level of oxygen in your blood. The more oxygenated your blood is, the more red it is. It shines a red light onto your body. The sensor detects how much of that red light is reflected back. And because the amount of blood in your wrist goes up and down, you get a signal from the sensor that looks like this. The higher the line is, the more oxygenated your blood is. But that line will also go up and down depending on how thick your veins are, how much ambient light there is, how close the sensor is, how thick your skin is. How do we fix that? Infrared, that's the invisible light I was telling you about at the start. The more oxygenated your blood is, the less infrared it becomes. So if you were to plot what the light sensor sees in infrared, it would be up here for deoxygenated blood and down here for oxygenated blood. If you were to look at both readings together, this is what oxygenated blood would look like. And then as you slowly remove oxygen from the blood, one line would go down and the other would go up until they cross over. And so now you don't have to worry about ambient light, where exactly is the sensor pointing on the wrist, all that sort of stuff. Because look, as these external factors like ambient light vary, these two lines move up and down, but they move up and down together. The relative height of the two lines stays the same. So that's the thing you measure, and that's the thing that can tell you how much oxygen there is in your blood. How clever is that?